Well, how's everyone doing? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Lithuanian Project. I think it is time to just get straight into it. I think I'm going to try maybe for next episode and for the future episodes that I'm just going to have a list of things just to do um, in my videos so that I can just go through them every single time take a look at them and yeah so we've got another four seasons to look at we are all the way up to 35 so big things have happened so in the last so we were here i think or here ish um or so this is when it ticked over so here so 50th 43rd 51st oh yeah so state 51st went to 50th 43rd and then all the way up to 35. So you've been relegated again. Do have the top goal score here. Titus Barn Barnuscus. Man, these these names are hard. But interesting. Just to kind of look at Sjuva. They've become a yo-yo side. It's really sad. Actually. However, that probably helps the second division quite a bit. And Zalgiris, to no one's surprise whatsoever, is, is in the top. We'll take a look at them. Let's just go to the stages so we can go back and kind of see what happened um, with the leagues here. So this was, yeah, that is where we finished off. So, quite interesting. Zalgir is pretty much constantly getting in. Um, Hegelman, Litauen, and Banga are, have done really well. So, let's take a look at uh, the schedule here and see um, how they've been getting along. Pretty much just getting... Well, that was a, that was a bit unlucky. Um, go to the last season. They, again, just... Just slowly getting through qualifying rounds, but not really doing too much. This is a decent run here. Getting all the way, actually, to AEK. Um, obviously, not great, but it's whatever. Getting knocked out by a Portuguese side, so can't really fault them for that. Anyway, um, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um... So, oh, Banga didn't had a poor season, considering they've been pretty much like up there, and they didn't even do well in the, in I mean they did well here, but that was a season ago. Uh, didn't make it here. Did nothing here. Uh, we'll take a look at Janava, because they've been actually probably consistently in it. Um, every single season. So here they made it to the fourth qualifying round, only going out to Hajuk. Um, going to another team here, but getting decently far, um, but still not making the group stages. Nothing here. So very interesting, very interesting. I think it's time to take a look at Zelgiris' schedule then, because they've pretty much just been there. <clears throat> So their key player, we'll, we'll take a look. So actually, Zhao Antonio, who initially is from a Brazilian side. These guys must have some link to Brazil, but we'll take a look at him. Not a bad player. Not a bad player at all. Wouldn't look out of place probably in a champion, League One championship side. So not, not terrible. Um, but something's definitely happened to this side that's making them look really good. So their key player is Marco Colina, attacking midfielder, initially from Hajik Split, 19 years old. And yeah, I mean, that's, you know, solid championship style player, probably. And we've got Vladimir, who they've got again from Brazil. I mean, decent potential, probably. Um, reputation's gone up quite well. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I'd look at that, but I want to look at the senior squad and take a look at player 
ability or potential ability. So they've got this guy here, Samuel uh, Porku, who's their striker, actually, and he's 29. So he never lived up to that potential. Should probably have looked at age as well. This guy's high potential defensive midfielder, Antonis Oldirkis, um, or something like that. Came through a Latvian side, and he is Latvian. So he's not even Lithuanian. Get out of here. We don't want him. Don't care. Um, young player, young player. So that's their num. Oh, so he's only on the loan, unfortunately for them. Um, all right, they got this guy, Henrique. Probably okay. He's Polish. I thought it was gonna be like Brazilian or something. So, not a lot of Lithuanian players um, at Zelgiris, but at the end of the day, does it really matter? We'll take a look at the B team. I guess, or if we can, it's not going to show. All right, doesn't want to show the. All right, we'll just get back. So, if we go now, so if we go to yeah here, we just go down below. We have all of this. So we'll go back to here. So this was the yeah, this is the that one. So Sudiva and Manesia got promoted in the first season. Uh, just kind of seeing what happens here. And I can't actually remember which team I made really, really good. Uh, because it's been a few days. I'd probably remember it if I look back, but yeah. Was it this one or this one maybe? Yeah, it was this one because they're professional. So all they've done is, is get to second in the league. Uh, if I look at the club details, yeah, they've got a bunch of money. And they've spent like I give them fifty million, they've spent most of it. So we'll take a look. They haven't done anything. We'll take a look at their transfer history though. Who wants to load? They've spent a bunch of money though. Mainly on free transfers. But clearly it hasn't helped them overall. So, thank you for loading speeds in FM. Anyway, uh, we'll go back. We'll take a closer look at them eventually. But um, they they did so. They didn't do well, and they did do well, and then they finished sixth. But hopefully they can push forward and, and do things, do good things. Anyway, uh, that's the lower leagues. Guess I gave the wrong team some money, but what can you do? Uh, this team's gone down quite a bit, getting relegated from, because I remember them not really being a staple, but being up there, minute table and a few relegations, so not great. Uh, Atalantis has just fallen off, so that's just, I mean, they've gone from a professional to an amateur club. I mean, that's, you know, not great on their part. Um, all right, cool. So let's now take a look at a few of the league things and the more technical things. Um, actually, let's take a look at some big transfers and what's happened. So, whoa, Joao Antonio 
for two million. Uh, so that's got to be oh no, big big transfer. I'm not seeing too many other. I mean, so we've got three million dollar plus transfers, and they're all involving Zalgiris. The top five all top six all involves Zalgiris. Uh, Quano are in there as well with this player uh, Yaroslav Begala and is he any good he's decent I don't know if I have him on my team but it's whatever but it's interesting because a lot not a lot are, are free there's a lot there's a there's money being spent in the league so that's pretty good uh, we'll take a look at manager movements Granite Xhaka is coaching not only Retarii, but uh, Panavazizis, who got, I think, relegated. But I can't blame them because they did get really, you know, I think they, yeah. It's not, you know, he didn't have a lot of time to really do anything. Alessandro Florenzi, um, yeah, so he's manager of Retarii currently. Nope. Akinfev left, um, Lejeich for Andre Kramaric. Interesting, interesting. Marek Hamshik. Okay, he was sacked then. Interesting. Very, very interesting managerial stuff. We'll go back to here. We got some competition reputation stuff to look at first. And then we'll go into the Zelgiris schedule. So, we're up there now with the Irish League. The difference is, I think our best player is better than a player from the Irish League. Or our best team is better than any team from the Irish League. I think our best team is uh, would look out of place in this area. However, as, as far as Algiris goes, however, the rest of the league kind of brings that down. We've gone, though, a long way here. Which is really, really good. So we'll take a look at some club coefficient points. So Lithuania all the way up here. So there must have been like one really good season. But I don't, I mean, they're, they're good seasons. But they're not exceptional. So I guess it's just that the those really bad seasons have left. Which is good. So... Yeah, very, very fascinating stuff. So let's take a look now at Zelgiris because, you know, they've been doing well. Let's take a look at their schedule. We'll go back to here. Qualifying rounds, Euro Cup, Group C. Hajduk, Sloven, and Fenerbahce. I don't think they got through. Yeah, they didn't get through. Made it to Euro Cup playoffs only to get into Group G with Livski, Sparta Prague, and Lazio, who they beat Lazio, but I would assume finished bottom. All right, and then we go here. So this is, seems to be where things kind of start to look up. So Euro Cup Group F. Uh, ah, again, a bottom, a bottom finish. So maybe it's this next season that something happened. I don't, I don't know. Euro Cup, Group B, and finishing third, which actually would put them 
into uh, the Euro 2 for next season. But that shouldn't, I don't, I don't feel like that should have alone brought the entire league up like that. But they've been consistently getting into group stages and have been winning games and putting up somewhat of a fight. So it is a good, it's a great success. But one of these two teams really need to be making a larger effort. So I guess now it's time to look at Lithuania and see where we are. So we're up to 89th in the league. So I think where we finished off here, we were at this stage. And we've gone all the way up to 89th. So let's take a look. Obviously, reputation is doing pretty well right there. Um, anyway, let's take a look. So we got Ivanuskas, our good friend, 19 million pound player and he's gone you know he had his loans he's gone back he's done well he had one not so good season where he was playing but when he's come on as a sub he's done all right but he seems pretty out of favor at inter milan he's got pretty decent stats as well just judging from this if we're looking at this he's never he never hit his potential he always stayed around that 148 49 mark Andreas Misiunas, again, um, never made it at Sporting. Made, how many appearances did he even make at Sporting? I mean, three appearances before moving on a free to young boys where he's only played 10 games. Um, Titus Malinkuskas, uh, the other striker, he's been an absolute legend for Tenerife. And even getting them into the first division. Um, I'm assuming they got relegated. But um, six goals, one assist. But, you know, consistently scoring goals in the Spanish second division. I will take that. I will take that. So we got this guy. Uh, Fridicas. Yeah. So this was the guy who had mad potential and was looking really, really good from Quano. So he moved on a free, unfortunately. Didn't play too much, but seems to now have had a bit of a breakout season-ish um, for Villarreal, doing decently well. So we'll take a look. He could easily hit the potential. If he can, if he can do it, I think he can. I think he can do it. We'll take a look at this guy, uh, Lucas Savikius. Al Halal from Zalgiris. So he, yeah, I remember getting a little sad about this because going to Saudi Arabia because we didn't have a player then from uh, that, from uh, one of our league's teams. But yeah, decent, decent player. Um, Utkus is a real player, but he's at Club Bruges now. So very, very interesting. We'll take a look at the team. We'll take a look at potential ability. Uh, Misunus never really hit it. Uh, but if we're looking at young players, so we have this guy, Andu Kinovas. But he's, he's playing in Slovenia, so he didn't even come through one of our teams. Um, not great. We've got, I'm uh, looking at players that are playing well that aren't really old. There's a guy called Kid. Just, just Kid. Came through Brazil um, on a free to Lithuania. Did really good for Zalgiris. And then went for 650,000 to Al and his name's Kid and he's Lithuanian though he's really Brazilian probably interesting love that uh other younger players though not a lot of young players in this team it's it's an aging squad we take a look at the age here um Take a look, kind of the young player, breakthrough player. So 
Labukas, another right back. We get a lot of those right back guys, which is kind of unfortunate. Anyone with a bit higher potential. So um, Rokas over here who, uh, yeah, he's just doing his thing, I guess. Um, Angie from Russia. So we did, again, a player that didn't even come on through the Lithuania side. Um, this guy's got Benes Butkus. I think we looked at him. Um, so he came through Suduva and now has made his way to Zalgira, scoring four goals and 16 appearances for them. So that's pretty decent. He's got a bit of potential about him. And we'll take a look at the under-19s, uh, but I highly doubt we'll find any one of two... Make a note, we'll take a look at him. Uh, Jedi Mines, Stite, I don't even, I don't even know. Um, and he's coming through this, Titus. So, um, yeah, nice. Look at their hot prospect. Uh, Tatis, yeah, whatever, really. But, yeah. Anyway. Cool, cool, cool. Let's take a look at the Champions League and all that fun stuff. I think we've kind of hit... Well, should I... I should probably take a look at at Lithuania as a whole um, and their schedule. We also need a World Cup to look at. But um, I want to see what they've been able to do. So we'll go back to here. So this is the Euro World Cup and we go back here kind of basically where i thought they would be uh fighting greece not too far off but off turkey and england definitely um and well above luxembourg and gibraltar um okay and then division c in you know, beating Finland, drawing Belarus, losing to Luxembourg isn't great. Uh, drawing to them as well, not great. But beating Belarus twice, probably resulting in, yeah, promotion there. So that's always good for the reputation of the league. Um, Euro... Championship qualifier seems to have been a pretty hard group. Um, I always hate how this is, but because it doesn't go to the group, it just goes to the qualifiers. But you've got, um, well, maybe if I go overview stages, profile matches. I mean, it's the same thing we've been looking at, basically. But... I just want to see... I want to see a table, basically, but... Beating Estonia, Slovakia, Northern Ireland, Malta. They're losing. Um, Denmark's also in the mix. This... Theoretically, you, they could win the group. So European League Division B, and they they got promoted from from that Iceland, Slovakia, and Slovenia. That's, I mean, that's that's really good. Like that's that's really good. I did not expect that. Wow. Okay. And then I guess kind of going into this, they have this group. So it's, they're definitely going to be, so Serbia and Scotland are going to be up there. Macedonia might, but I don't think they've got much more than Lithuania. Dora and Moldova will be at the bottom. But I think, I think this could be a group that Lithuania could theoretically fight for. Uh, with a bit of form they're in, and maybe an influx of like one superstar coming into the side that could be a big thing 
So we could see some very interesting things happen. Let's take a look then at the, well, we might as well just we can take a look at the World Cup. Holders are England uh, since last time. Very, very interesting. They beat Argentina. And then we have um, the European champions, Belgium, beating France in the runner-up. So then we'll take a look at the Champions League. Holders are PSG. Uh, so since last time, it's been Bayern Munich over Liverpool, Madrid over Milan, Bayern Munich over Liverpool, and again, and then PSG over Man City. So again, no, no teams outside top five leagues doing anything, interestingly enough. Uh, and here, it's been Tottenham over Man United, Chelsea over Arsenal, Milan over Sevilla, Liverpool over Napoli. Quite interestingly. Again, no one since Porto from an outside top five league. And then, we've got some interesting winners here. So it's been Atalanta, Leicester, Hamburg, and Sporting. Um, over the likes of Bilbao, Kiev... Villarreal Sassuolo. So very, very interesting to to look at all of that. Uh, and then the Euro Cup 2. I think we got through. So who will the Lithuanian side be playing? So I think they're going to be in the second knockout no they're playing standard well that's not helpful at all they are probably going to lose um well standard liege i can't i really can't look at anything because i don't have any of it loaded um to the longevity of of this save but yeah so clearly what we've learned from this, and I think what I'm going to be taking a look at, is giving a team um, from this division a bunch of money doesn't work. So we're going to give this time a random team a bunch of money from this league and see if they can do it. Because, for one, if you, say, had a government-controlled league and you're giving everyone the state-of-the-art materials uh, to succeed, you would want to see results. And if bringing a low club from the lower leagues isn't working, what would you logically do? You'd do it again with a team that would already look a bit better. So we'll do a team. I think... What we'll do is we'll take just a, a mid-table team. We'll take this one uh, because they've been in the A-League a while ago, and they've just floated around mid-table. They've got a little prospect over here who probably isn't that good, to be fair. Yeah, not, not great. Um, and we will, and actually in this save, they have gone up, risen through the leagues, which is a nice little story. We'll, so we'll take them, we'll make them a professional team, we'll give them the money, the finances, and everything. And then they will then, um, hopefully, by the next episode be competing quite well well that's that's the hope at least uh we'll see what happens oh i did want to look at stadiums i wanted to look at stadiums that was a big thing for that i i never really looked at so let's see if we can yeah so stadiums because i wanted to see if what the biggest stadiums were okay 
So Quano Zelgiris, they don't even they don't even have they don't even have more than a thousand capacity. So some of these teams couldn't even you know do much of anything in in Europe because they need a bigger stadium. So I think that's been the downfall of Quano. Um, very, very interesting. So the LFF Stadionas, I don't even know if it's allowed in Europe, quite frankly, but um, Sejuva's stadium probably is allowed. Hegelman Liauten. We could, I might give Liauten 10 million just to see what happens with them and see if they can either overtake Zalgiris and, and win the crown. I think that's what I'll do as well. So I'll do those two teams, and we'll see what happens. Um, but one of these sides is going to need to eventually upgrade the stadium, and I'll see. We'll, we'll try and find which team has the biggest stadium first, um, or to as much of a degree as I, I possibly can. Uh, and who has, well, not just who has the biggest stadium, but also, like, who gets to it first. Who gets to 10,000 first, who gets to 20,000 first, and things like that. Anyway, if you enjoyed, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button and all that good stuff. At episode 10, if the first video, first episode of this has 10 likes, I will be releasing um, some type of download for the folder of this save so all of you could theoretically go in and and mess around with it or i'll make a copy of it of some kind um but yeah we'll see what happens with that um but by by the 10th episode not any later then we'll see anyway thank you for watching i'll see you guys next time take care